Hello everyone, I am uh, André Boacretez. I'm a software architect at Kelco. Hi, I'm Anka Kopetz. I'm a software engineer at Kelco. And today we are going to talk about query performance optimization. Actually, we are going to talk about uh, our experience gained during one year of uh, trying to implement um, uh, our search engine with uh, Solar Lucene. Um, before we start the talk, maybe a quick raise of hands. Uh, how many of you have already used Solar or Elasticsearch? Yeah, almost everybody, nice. Cool. And uh, how many of you had uh, performance problems? Okay. Ah, not everybody, <laughs> but quite a lot, thanks. So <laughs> you are at the right talk. A quick outline. Uh, first, uh, we will explain the, the context and the setup. What, what is Calcu? What is our search engine usage? And why it's important uh, to have performance? Uh, we will present the, the way we benchmarked on uh, our, uh, our system and what we choose to be prepared because we knew that uh, performance was critical. Uh, we will present performance solutions we came up with. Um, most of the performance solutions depend on the usage, so uh, not all will be apply uh, applicable for you, but um, I hope uh, you will see the, the way we worked and solved problems. And the last, we will uh, explain what happened in production, because of course, if, even if you are well prepared, uh, there are still surprises in production. So, before going into details, a uh, brief, brief de description of Kelku. Kelku is an e shopping platform that connects uh, uh, customers with merchants. Actually, we have um, a repository of uh, merchants' offers that are indexed on our uh, search platform. And then the end users via Kelku website and the partners' website, they can search for goods. As you can see, the search platform is the core of our system. We have an index of uh, more than 70 million documents. And uh, Kelku is deployed worldwide in 12 countries. And uh, from the traffic point of view, we had peaks of uh, 3,000 queries per second. To better understand what we do, a small uh, example. French people love cheese fondue. Oh, Am yes, I right? yes, yes, yeah, they do a lot. <laughs> so they can connect on the Kelku website and type in a query like uh, Appareil à fondue en céramique, and they will find plenty of uh, fondue kits. As you can see, we uh, display the offers from uh, different merchants, and the user have the possibility to filter by category. We display statistics like a min max price, and they can do facet uh, navigation. You, you may be already familiar with the facets. Uh, yeah, I think so, because we are going to talk a lot. I will just say that we, we display all the merchants that uh, have offers associated to this query, and for each member, uh, merchant will display the number of offers that are indexed. Um, so, as you can see, a search engine is central to the, the way Kelku works. Um, in the past, um, we, uh, as we were brought by Yahoo, uh, we had access to ya their uh, Yahoo internal uh, uh, search engine. Um, worked pretty well, but when they sold us, we no longer had updates on the technology and uh, nobody knew it, so it was not even possible to buy support for that. And uh, in 2013, it was decided to go uh, with an implementation using Solar 4. In the <laughs> past months, we selected uh, what was the, the best engine we could try, and uh, we decided to go with uh, Solar. Um, two main important points were uh, we should be able to sustain the uh, Christmas high traffic at the end of the year. Uh, but uh, we don't have uh, strong uh, constraints around uh, near real-time indexation. 
As Andre explained, for 2013, we had an important target. Uh, it was the Christmas traffic. We are concentrated on query performance. So we said before putting everything into production, we like to do some performance evaluation. So we chose uh, as a target our big, bigger country cluster, which was a conf composed of 12 servers with more than 10 million documents in the index. And we expected a traffic of more than 600 queries per second, and we wanted an average query time less than uh, 200 milliseconds. So we said, first of all, we have to develop our search application, deploy it on the pre-production servers. The pre-production servers uh, should be as close as possible to the production servers from the hardware point of view. And then we had to identify the monitoring tools and we wanted to execute uh, benchmarks in order to simulate the real traffic. We interacted uh, frequently with the Solar community, which is a very active and useful community. So we decided to uh, structure our clusters um, uh, separately for each country. Uh, most of you should be familiar with the, the, the world structure, but I will look up. So we have search clients. Uh, in our case, it's, uh, it's Java using HTTP Solar Server, connecting through a virtual IP uh, to a hardware load balancer that distributes the query among all the servers uh, of a country cluster. Um, depending on the countries, we have different volume, different uh, queries performance. So uh, keeping that separated was uh, easier for us for production. On the other side, we have uh, our offers repository that goes through uh, our custom Java indexers with Kelco uh, code in it using Cloud Solar Server to distribute the indexation of documents in the, in the clusters. For the benchmarks, we had to find a stress tool in order to execute them, so we chose GetLink. With GetLink, you can define scenario that um, read uh, the, um, a data set, and then they will send many, many queries in parallel to, to the pre-production servers in order to simulate the real traffic. For the data set, what we did, we took the production log logs from the previous search engine, Yahoo search engine, and then we transformed them to Solar Query in order to be as close as possible to the production traffic. When setting the benchmarks, there are two parameters that we found very important, is the number of users in parallel and the duration of test. For the number of users in parallel, just pay attention when you set it, because if it is too small, then your CPU load uh, on the pre-production servers will be small, so the servers will be underloaded. So for example, at the beginning, we had a load of 40%. And then if it is too high, the servers are overloaded, so it has an impact on the average uh, response time. So the benchmarks, the results were, were unrelevant. So what we did, we chose a value so that the CPU load to be of 80%. The duration of test, it should be long enough in order to have relevant results and not too long in order not to have to wait too much for your results. It has an impact of the productivity. So for example, what we choose, we set it to one hour or two hours and it was uh, enough. GetLink generates reports of this kind. So these are the metrics that we used in order to evaluate the performance. Is the mean response time, for example, or, or the mean number of uh, requests per second. GetLink um, shows the graphs like response time distribution of uh, or a number of queries per second distribution. And so uh, at the end of the benchmark, of course we have the average queries per second as was time and, and those graphs, but it was also important to closely monitor um, um, a lot of metrics about what happened on the servers uh, to verify where are the bottlenecks. Because um, if your ben benchmarks uh, eats a lot of the, uh, the disk, 
um, everything else will not be used uh, at its full potential. So having those graphs during the benchmarks allowed to verify if uh, the load was evenly distributed among all the resources, memory, CPU, disks, etc. And uh, not only the uh, system metrics, but also the metrics from Solar using JMX to have uh, caches hit ratio verified that, that they are uh, configured, configured properly. Um, as well, we monitor the, the warm up time, is the time after a commit before the, the data is available and caches are warmed. Uh, it should not be too long. We monitor the number of index segments too because the, the most index segments you have uh, is the, the way the Lucene index is done. The more uh, segments you have, the less performance you get. So this was the phase where we prepared our benchmarks. We identified the tools to monitor our system. We installed our pre-production servers. We developed our, the first features on our search application and we prepared the benchmark scenario, so we were ready. We said, let's go, let's launch the benchmarks. In order to do the query performance evaluation to, and to explore new ways to improve it. So what happened? Um, first, we explored different possibilities around the sharding and replicating. Um, I guess uh, most of you uh, should have an idea about that, but um, simple, simple case, is the replication. What happens is that uh, the index is the same of, on each server and the queries are load balanced among all of those. It scales linearly. It's uh, very efficient when you have a very high number of queries per second. Um, that's a, a very good scalability uh, system. However, when each of the queries is too long, uh, for example, when the index is very big, um, what you can do is shard. Shard splits the documents among uh, different uh, entities. So here we have servers that contain shard1. It's our replicas of shard1. Same for shard2 here. And uh, when a query arrives on any of the servers, it will be split in two, two or more, depending on the number of shards. Subqueries, so each of those will run in parallel, and uh, the results are merged and returned to the, the client. So the query times gets roughly equivalent to the maximum time on uh, each of the shards. So uh, during benchmarks, we had a situation where the hardware used either in this configuration or this one with the same number of servers, the results were fairly the same, but that was on the ideal case. What happens in case of a failure? In, the, in this case, it's uh, very different. When purely replicating, a server down means that the other servers will have to work a bit more, but all others will be loaded the same. What happens with sharding is that the load is distributed on the remaining servers of the shard. So here we have only one poor server doing all the work. And uh, it means that the cluster will be bottlenecked much faster, despite having the same hardware. So when you need resilience, uh, keep a lot of replication uh, and Avoid sharding if you can. During ben benchmarks, uh, we had a surprise too. We expected to have very homogeneous hardware and configuration, and um, sometimes we saw some servers more loading than others. And what happens is that with a solar um, cluster, all the servers will uh, work the same. Uh, especially with replication, the load is really, really identical, um, perfectly distributed, distributed among all the servers. And sharding, if you have bad luck, you can have a shard slightly more loaded than the others, but mostly the, the load is evenly distributed. That means that if 
any server is a bit slower than the others, the others will not work for him. Uh, so um, it will be a bottleneck very quickly. That's uh, how we discovered that some of the servers had uh, an energy saving option in the BIOS, so the CPU was not fully used. We were able to fix that. Uh, another aspect that we analyzed was the indexation. Actually, the question was how often should we com commit? How often our documents should be visible to search and how often they should be stored in the index? For the visibility part, we um, choose the soft commit, uh, implemented um, with committee within command of uh, 30 minutes, and open searcher equals true. So open searcher equals true, it means that offers are immediately visible to search. What happens during soft commit is that the transaction logs are not truncated, so they are accumulating and the caches are flushed and auto warm so just pay attention because it has an impact on your performance in terms of um, uh, query time. For the durability, we implemented the hard commit via auto commit of 15 minutes and open searcher equals false. So it means that the documents will be stored on the, uh, on the index, um, on the Lucene index, but they won't be visible to search. What happens here is that the transaction logs are truncated and the Sigma merges are initiated, which was very good because actually during our benchmarks, we realized that the number of in, uh, index seg segments impacts the query performance. So we said, okay, well, let's optimize our index. Let's optimize it very often. So. We'll, if you launch the optimize command, the number of segments in your index will be reduced to one. So immediately after executing this command, we had pretty good results in terms of query performance, but actually we realized very fast that this operation has short-term benefits. Because after one hour of commits, the average response time and the average number of query per second in our benchmark increased. So we said, let's try something, um, let's, let's try something else. Let's set a more aggressive merge policy. So what we did, we modified the parameters of the tier merge policy in order to have during the commit when the segments are merged, to, for Lucene to merge as many segments as possible. And actually what happened is that we had pretty good results in terms of uh, uh, number of queries per second and average response time. So actually it worked for us in our case. So Anka explained what we did on the indexation side to improve the query performance. Um, to improve query performance, it's also important to look after search caches. Um, first of all, the Lucene files are accessed through a memory mapping system. Uh, it allows the operating system to cache the files in RAM, so um, you have a much less I.O. weight, and you don't have to increase the JVM memory. In uh, our cases, we had uh, enough RAM to uh, not even need the SSD disks. Um, we, we are still using the spinning disks we have uh, from the present previous project. Um, document cache was uh, disabled because it was quite redundant with the uh, memory mapping of uh, Lucene files. And uh, we didn't see any improvement in the, in the benchmark of uh, using this cache. Um, the query result cache was uh, kept uh, very small um, as we already have a uh, query cache above uh, the Calcu search API. It was redundant with Solar and uh, it didn't bring any uh, visible improvement in benchmarks and it just consumed uh, too much uh, JVM memory. 
So in a given query, uh, different caches are used. Uh, here we have a query with a full text term iPhone, and we have a filter on the merchant ID. We ask for facets on uh, field uh, category, as well as uh, colors uh, on the offers displayed. So filters use filter cache, of course. Um, facets on single valued field, like we have here uh, for category ID, uh, use um, the field cache of uh, Lucene. Uh, you cannot tune it uh, through Solar. Um, by default, the facets on dynamic fields, uh, dynamic uh, multi valued fields, uh, like we have here with a feature star that allows to store um, um, a great number of different fields that depends on the category, etc. on Calco, it's not uh, limited by the schema. Uh, but by default, the FC means that a field value cache is used and um, the cache entries are very big. We had issues uh, on memory usage with that and uh, it's not very good for low cardinality fields. In our case, the color it could be maybe a dozen different values so we tried the facet method enum, um, which is not always advised, but uh, it works very well for the, the feeds with the low cardinality. And uh, in benchmarks, we saw that the memory usage was much lower, and the processing time was uh, the same and just spared more memory. It's just that it's, it uses the filter cache same as uh, filters, uh, but you have to put a lot of entries. Each value of the facet will have a, a cache entry, so we had to update a lot. We also analyzed the impact of the query features on the performance. So we, you have to add many features in order to meet your uh, relevancy requirements. But what happens is that uh, most of the time, or sometimes, these features have an impact on the performance. So what you should do, you should get a good balance between relevancy and performance. When you measure the relevancy, you measure via manual test or A-B testing. But what you should do, you should also measure the impact on the performance. So you should monitor your cluster in order to see was the impact on each feature on the mean response time or uh, query time. To better understand that, I would like to give you an example uh, of uh, transformations of features that we implemented at, at Kelku. So if the user types in uh, a query like leather accessories for iPhone, we'll transform this query we will apply some transformations like uh, lowercase, leather becomes leather. Stemming, the accessories is reduced to accessory. We remove the stop words and then we split the model name. So iPhone 5, it will become two words, iPhone and 5. By default, the query operator is end. So all search terms are mandatory. But what happens if the query doesn't return any result. What we do, we execute an OR query. And actually, during our benchmarks, we realized that the OR query is very expensive. It takes a lot of time because it returns lots of uh, results and it searches through the whole index. So what we did, for example, we uh, implemented the mean should max that will match that reduce the number of OR queries. The facets are also very expensive. The fact that we display offers from different merchants, so we had to use group by merchant ID, it's also expensive. The main idea be behind is every time you add a new feature, try to test the impact on the performance. So this was the end of our benchmarks phase. We analyzed many aspects. We did many improvements on the solar cloud configuration, on the indexation policy, merge policy, search caches, and solar features. So we were ready to go in production, right? Um, 
And of course, we had surprises. Um, for example, we had out of memories uh, due to filter cache. We tuned the, the values so that the memory usage was adequate in the benchmark, but the actual number you put in the configuration is not the memory used. The memory used will uh, de depend on the data you have in the index as well as uh, what are the queries that are done. And despi despite we uh, used the production indexation data and production queries, we were quite surprised uh, also by that. Um, so we increased the memory. It's important uh, that your server GVM has the same start and maximum uh, GVM heap settings. That was uh, very evident in the benchmarks, something like 20% 20, 20 performance uh, improvement. And we tuned down the, a bit the number of uh, filter cache entries and uh, we solved that. About uh, garbage collecting uh, parameters, um, there are quite a few. It's a bit of a black art. I refer you to the page of uh, Sean AC that sums up the various settings that works. Some are more detailed than others. Um, the main takeaway is that concurrent mark and sweep, CMS, uh, is important for Solar. That's the, the algorithm that works the, uh, the, the best. Uh, we had a few bad surprises with the uh, servers going into uh, recovery. Um, that means that one of the servers in a cluster uh, thinks is, uh, it's uh, lagging behind the uh, indexation, so it will stop serving queries, and the load will be distributed uh, among the others. And uh, it will stop serving queries and retrieve an index uh, from uh, another server. And during the, during the time the index is retrieved, it means that uh, you have one, one less server doing the query work. And we followed closely the solar versions uh, that were released uh, to benefit from uh, improvements and features, uh, bug fixes or uh, performance improvements. Uh, some, we had some cases uh, of regression in your cases, so uh, we discussed on the solar user mailing list, filed uh, Jira, and helped fix the, those cases. Um, and the subsequent versions were, uh, were perfect for us. So this is our story. It was a success story with uh, Lucene Solar. It took us one year. We had a high traffic peaks of uh, more uh, 3,000 queries per second with an index of more than 70 million documents. The main ideas that we like to share with you when tackling performance issues is benchmark your system before putting it into production. Keep monitoring your production cluster. Just pay attention that the configuration that you do during the benchmark might not be the same in the production. As Andre explained with the setting of the filter cache, we had an out of memory in production. And identify the bad guy and deal with him. It wasn't one of my colleagues at Kielku. <laughs> Actually, what I'm trying to say is that try to identify the resource or the component or the behavior that might have an impact on your performance. We have new ideas for performance optimization that we would like to implement them, like analyzing the incoming traffic and see if we can remove some bad queries or test some other types of caches. So we still have work to do. That's it. Thank you a lot. So if you are interested, as you can see, we, we are doing uh, many interesting stuff at Kelku. If you are interested in search or big data, please join us. The engineering team is in Grenoble in France, which is a very nice city near the mountains. And now if you have questions. Yeah. OK, any questions? Um, so, uh, fi finally, uh, you, you use shards, or uh, what was the decision? It depends. Okay. Um, so, uh, for one of our most loaded cluster, we, um, as we were using a bit old servers, uh, we had to shard, 
Um, so I guess it was something like uh, no more than two shards, and and don't remember the number of replica maybe for for France. We it was uh, 12, I think, or something. Yeah, it, yeah. it was 12 servers, for example. Mm. Uh, it was really the one of the, the biggest cluster, uh, most problematic one. And others were only, for example, two servers uh, in replication uh, and such. And uh, we ended up uh, with uh, buying new hardware. Uh, servers were quite old, and this time we did not need the sharding to simplify that. So when uh, when you use uh, uh, for for the case where you used shards, uh, yeah. did you use something like uh, routing, like uh, I mean, to yeah yeah, yeah it, we had a, yeah. It, it was the the, the default routing, um, so we didn't uh, customize that. Is that your question? Yeah, uh, yeah. My question is if, whether you customized the routing or not. No, no. It it was the default one and uh, inside Solar yeah. Cloud, you are seeing. No, we didn't. Thank you. Hi. On one slide, you showed that you have uh, regionalized um, uh, server clusters. So you, there was one uh, cluster for France and one for Russia. Um, do you split any content? Uh, according to language to each cluster, so does the Russian cluster just has Russian language content, or do you have a multi-language um, environment in each cluster? No, right now we separate that. Um, the, the configuration for Solar, we have a, a common part and a customized part for each, uh, each region, uh, country, and um, there is no, inside the cluster, there is no multi-language stuff. And um, the only thing we shared between clusters was the Zookeeper ensemble. Um, so with uh, five servers spread among all those. And uh, even for the, for the Zookeeper, even if it was only one ensemble for all the countries, there are split using uh, Zookeeper root. I don't know if you are familiar. No. So um, no. it allows to separate the configuration. And for us, it was much easier to change a configuration for a country separately with that. Okay, so um, um, so any any content you have in, for example, f French, you put in uh, just uh, one cluster and have a language specific uh, indexing and schema in this cluster with Zola. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. For example, the stemming, we apply different stemmers for each language. So yeah, depending on the country cluster, we, the sh schema is adapted to that country, so it will include the appropriate stemmer. Okay, and have you ever uh, th thought about um, mixing it up and, and how that would have an impact on performance? Um, the, the advantage of mixing uh, different countries on, the, uh, on a single cluster would be to um, spread the load uh, in an easier way. Uh, problems are that uh, memory-wise, it's not uh, it's not easy, and um, the the caching is different. Uh, and we had the habit uh, with the previous engine to keep uh, countries separate. So uh, we kind of um, uh, went with the, the the same type of architecture. Um, sometimes we discuss about what can we merge. Uh, what uh, can happen is that on a single server we can have multiple instances of solar, some for a country, some for another, uh, but we don't mix the, um, the settings or the, the JVM, uh, we don't mix languages in a single uh, solar JVM. Thank you. How do you replicate your index? Are you using the HTTP uh, replication or the rsync connection? Yeah, yeah, we are using the, the Solar Cloud feature, so it's all done uh, by uh, by Solar itself. Uh, is that your question? We, we don't uh, use the old style replication. Our first prototypes uh, used the master slave and such, and uh, it was a bit of uh, going back compared to the Yahoo proprietary uh, search engine. And we were glad that uh, Solar Cloud arrived 
and uh, removed any uh, single point of failure. In case, um, compared to the previous search engine, there is much less uh, spoofs in, uh, in solar uh, compared to a lot of others. Hi. Um, no. Question about hardware. So um, those clusters uh, look li really impressive. So do you host everything internally or maybe use some services like Amazon services? No, we have uh, our own space in data centers with uh, physical hardware. Um, it's, a, it's a bit uh, of a, a legacy. Uh, we are studying what we can move uh, to uh, Amazon uh, services or, uh, and such. It's not that easy because the, the volume of data we index um, as a cost and um, well, for, for machines that runs uh, 24 days, uh, etc., it's um, it's not so interesting to go uh, to Amazon. Um, you have changed the facet method to you have changed the facet method to Enum, and did it reduce the amount of memory you have to need for the caches? So, so sorry, what do you say? Uh, so you changed the facet method to yeah. from FC to Enum. Yeah, it reduces it. And this, this, this reduces the amount of memory you need yeah. for the caching. Yeah, because actually the, for each type of cache, uh, the type of information that is stored is different from one to another. So it reduced the amount of memory. And how much? Could you give some percentage? Uh, actually, it depends a lot on the number of entries that you set. But for the same, uh, uh, for, for, for the same number of entries... Yeah, yeah. Uh, sorry. Uh, in fact, it, it really depends on the data. So if you have a um, um, few different values for a field, uh, the field value cache is really not efficient. Um, and uh, Enum uh, really shines for that. Its um, difference is that for the setting, you, uh, you enter one for each um, field in a field value cache. Whereas for um, the enum mode with filter cache, it's uh, one for each value for each field. So the, the number is, uh, I don't know, thousands more, uh, thousands bigger. It's just that the memory usage is much smaller per item. Okay. Thanks. Any more questions? Hi. So I know you said during your benchmarking you were targeting um, sort of meme response time. Did you ever have to sort of consider things like 95th percentile and maximum response time as well, just for, for looking at those kinds of edge yeah, cases? Yeah, yeah. It was a, to simplify a bit the presentation, but uh, of course the, 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 the 95 and 99 percent are, are important. Um, uh, with uh, with the GVM garbage collector, um, it can hurt a lot the 99 performance. Uh, what we saw in the 95 it was uh, pretty decent. So um, I guess one of the benchmarks at the, the value. Where is it? At the beginning. Beginning. Actually, oh, yeah. in this way, we realized that the OR queries takes a lot of time. So we had to analyze them in details. And we had to find a solution to de reduce the number of OR queries. As I said, the metrics that I showed there, it, it was just an example of the metrics that we are using. But actually, we are analyzing the whole report. It's very important, as you, as you are saying. OK. Any more questions? Going once, <laughs> twice, three. Sold. Okay, thank you. Thank you, guys. And enjoy your lunch.